my name is Jay Bridgeball. I'm a real estate broker since 1988. I've seen the good days, the bad days, and the not so bad days. My passion is to educate consumer about all aspects in real estate. Actually, I sold over $1.75 billion in real estate. Now, that's a lot of experience. I went through many failures, many successes, and I've seen many stories that you will be amazed. Not everything looks so glamorous as it is sometimes. On Let's Talk Real Estate, we will dig deep down and I will take you step by step through every process from buying your first home to buying a multi-million dollar investment property. We will have various people on this show, lawyers, investors, we'll have mortgage brokers, appraisals, and everyone else to assist us to take you to that point. My aim is to break it down in such easy term that you will be able to follow. So please join me every Thursday between one and two, and let's talk real estate. And welcome to this episode of Let's Talk Real Estate. Uh, here with myself, your host, Anna Kanhai. Typically, we have Jay Bridgepaul, and as you can see, this is not Jay Bridgepaul. <laughs> um, so, we have Jan Janelle Mohammed here from uh, Remax Chai Realty. Uh, Chai Realty, <laughs> not Chai like the tea, no. <laughs> okay, uh, that's all, all the way up in uh, Bradford. All right. So uh, we have a very special episode today, um, and you know, as you know, basically we just want to focus on a few things of um, you know real estate outside of the city yes. versus real estate in the city. A lot of people have that question: Should I commute? Is it worth it? Should I invest outside? So a lot of things like that. What are, yeah, what are some of your sure. thoughts? Well, um, it's it's individual, of course. Mm -hmm. If you do, if you go into the city every day, then if you can. If you're moving outside the city, you want to make sure that area has a good go train service right. or some sort of uh, you know regular service to the city. Uh, I I moved to Bradford from Mississauga recently. Mm -hmm. My husband works downtown, and he takes the go train, and it's perfect. Really? Yeah. Okay. He so loves it. It's very comfortable. No, don't have to worry about parking or any of the. How long is that, how long is the commute? Let's just focus on Bradford specifically for a second. Um, Approximately because, yeah. one hour. Really, and that's from downtown the core. Right into downtown. Well, yeah, I, to well Union Station, the, yeah. it's funny you mentioned that because I know people firsthand that spend over an hour and, and 10 minutes, maybe an hour and 20 minutes commuting That's right. each way. And then parking. And then parking. And, the and then getting to your. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it really depends on the person. It's if Some people like to commute, some people like to have the convenience of their car around. Right. It really depends on the person. However, um, given the prices of the GTA mm -hmm. and. Uh, particularly for new buyers or a new couple, it's this is really a great option to move outside. It, it, it really is because you know, uh, just a few months back, I think this was uh, in November. I and I sold a two-bedroom condo downtown yeah. for five hundred and sixty thousand dollars. I know. I know. <laughs> so it's I guess we're saying we can maybe get semis or, or something like that up, uh, yeah, up in Brantford. Yeah, of course. Right? I mean, you could get an entire detached three-bedroom, beautiful home for. Seven hundred thousand, wow. sometimes less. Wow. What's what? What sort of square footage are we talking about? Uh, approximately two thousand. Wow. So maybe I, maybe amazing, I, maybe right? I should be moving up there. Seriously, <laughs> like, and the homes, are, and uh, you'll find areas outside the GTA uh, that's developing. There's a newness to it. Mm. You know, it is the streets are new, the lampposts, just the aesthetics of right. it. Right. So it, it feels beautiful. like a brand new city, that's uh, right. as opposed yeah. to you know us, uh, you know, growing up in and around the GTA. You know, Toronto, Scarborough, Mississauga, like they they weren't ever, um, you know, in a state of decay. But, That's, yeah. but but the fact is that nothing has ever nothing's been older, new. Yes. Nothing's been new since the it's 60s <laughs> you know, around here. I know. So none of us even remember that. Yes. Now uh, I guess that's where Bradford has uh, a leg up on some of the other areas, like um, yeah. you know. Uh, Orangeville, Kitchener, Cambridge, yeah. Waterloo. I've, I've moved a lot of clients up to areas like Shelburne too. They're yeah. fairly new, but yeah. you know the infrastructure is it's it's there. But then not all the hospitals and the schools and all, right. and all these things aren't there. A so big thing to consider, right? Yeah. Um, in Bradford, in particular, their population is set to double in the next 
10 to 15 years mm. and um, you could still take advantage of the accelerator like for example what Milton was 10 years ago right. you could have bought a beautiful home in Milton and uh, and take advantage of that um, with, it, with it catching up with the GT. Bradford's still at that point. Right, so it's still, right? like what you're saying is we can still get in early right now in, That's uh, right. in Bradford. That's right, yeah. Okay, so I, I guess, now, I, and I we forgot to mention at the beginning, so if uh, anyone's interested in contacting Janelle, her information's uh, below, so you can just scroll, click, and uh, send her an email. Any questions about specifically Bradford or even in the general in the GTA? Uh, so uh, sorry. So to continue uh, on that on that note, you're talking about infrastructure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the infrastructure, like we, um, they're opening up the, uh, another uh, exit from the highway. Um, oh, you really? just see all these things coming. A lot of businesses. We're attracting huge businesses. Uh, soon there'll be uh, so much jobs available. In, okay. In What's the population like roughly there? It's sorry to put you on the spot. It's thirty thousand. Okay. So yeah. it's it's quite sizable. Yeah. And, um, and remember, Bradford initially was a little town. It was mm -hmm. founded by um, Dutch settlers. Mm -hmm and farming uh, that's why it's called the Holland M Marsh right all right and um, it was perfect for farming now it's just blew up into a huge community with lots of young families like mm. my street is in the evening it's crazy there's lots of kids on their bikes it's amazing all the kids wow. meet up uh, in, it's a different feeling I, I've been I've been through there a few times and I know there's an older area to the town than a newer area so yes. is that like uh, kind of how maybe Mississauga Streetsville is in the center exactly, of Mississauga? exactly exactly that it's like um, Streetsville is an old feel to it so you got character yes mm -hmm. and um, the buildings look you know like uh, colonial like, yeah. exactly mm -hmm. and there's really cool bars in the corner mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. a little burger joint and you know so you've got that small town feel with the with the suburb feel kind of all, all right. mixed together uh, yeah. one thing I really think our viewers will be uh, interested here is mm -hmm. is you know that uh, go train now it's yes. it, it's coming is it every half hour or is that how it works um, it's there's the rush hour time mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, it's quite frequent. Don't quote me, yeah. but it's about 20 minutes or oh, okay. 15 minutes or so, I'm not sure. Mm. Actually, my husband has the answer to that. <laughs> and then there's a regular bus service mm -hmm. um, th uh, thereafter. Um, but uh, it's you're right off the 400 as well. If mm -hmm. you decide to drive, jump on the 400, it takes you two minutes to get so there. So I, I guess really, uh, and you know, the focus of this particular uh, segment, segment one right now is, uh, you know, answering the question, should you actually make the commute? So I guess there's a lot of things that yes. our viewers um, or potential buyers out there would actually have to consider. And number one, I think it's, you know, things like gas saving. Uh, yes. I, I can see on, on average, I probably spend, you know, about $400 a month on gas. Yeah, yeah. And that's fairly normal. You yes. know, a lot of people spend, I know people that spend $300 on the 407 just alone on the on that bill. Yes, you have so, to, it's something you, know, you have to consider for yeah. sure. And, but you are paying less for your home. So you're paying less for your home. You, you don't have to deal with, um, you know, if you're commuting, you don't have to worry about the gas then That's because right. then you're just taking the GO train yes, down. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of hidden savings that you might actually be able to bring your entire family expenses down and have absolutely. a better quality of life. Absolutely. Um, you bring it down one, the gas savings, you take advantage of uh, Sorry, you're spending more on gas. Mm -hmm. That's a given. If you're, if you're, dri you're driving, if you're driving every day, right. but many you're people spending less won't. on a house, yeah. and you're taking advantage of that accelerator where Bradford will catch up with the mm -hmm. GTA pricing. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of time. Right. So the next year or two, if you're planning on investing or you're looking for, uh, you know, a home that will make you a lot of money mm -hmm. in the next few years, somewhere like Bradford, even a. Uh, uh, Kitchener and all of that is mm -hmm. doing pretty good, but Bradford is really catching up. Right you know, now. I feel like it's because they're on that that sort of spillover effect, where That's because right. you know everywhere everywhere surrounding it is so expensive. You That's know, the right. the, the nearest areas are Vaughan and you know That's even right. Markham a little bit to that area, yeah. but it just ends up being. People have nowhere else to go. That's right. That's a reasonable price because yeah. uh, I've, I've been looking just in Vaughan um, about eight hundred eight hundred fifty thousand for a townhouse. It's, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> so it's so, so when you think okay, you can just zip you know uh, fifteen minutes north yes. uh, and and get a, a fully detached property That's at two thousand. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, the good thing about Bradford too, in particular, and I'm sure this is the same as other uh, small towns outside, mm -hmm. is that you have the the uh, Parks, trails, all these wrecks. So there's a lot of natural. Centers. Yeah. Oh my God, it's amazing. Like wow. my kids and I go hiking all the time. And uh, ask me this two years ago, I'd be like uh -huh. hiking. No, no thank <laughs> you. we look forward to it so much. Winter time hiking. Really? It's amazing. Like the uh, the trails are amazing out there. Oh my goodness. And the lakes, right? So. Yeah, I guess you know it's a different it's a different life. So I guess you can kind of go home, and when you're at home, you turn off. 
That's and right. you just uh, have a lot of family time and relaxing time. It's really amazing. Like and, and, and you get some nice properties. So one thing I, I really want to focus on a little bit uh, in, in this particular segment is the this accelerator effect you're talking yes. about. Yes. So realistically, you know, a lot of people in the GTA have experienced that. Um, let's say Brampton to Mississauga. So a lot of people were spilling over from Mississauga That's going right. to Brampton. Um, we saw uh, bungalows increase from 2013 from 300,000 all the way to 600,000 in present. Yes. So that's just as a matter of over five years. Yes. So uh, can you give us a little bit about the history of um, uh, Bradford over the last maybe two or three years? Has it yeah. been increasing steadily? or? Yes. Um, at the time we bought a home, which was about two, uh, two years ago, mm -hmm. um, you could have bought like a four bedroom home for around 600,000. Wow. Now a four bedroom home is nine to a million. Wow. Right? Okay. Um, but that, mind you, that was 2016 pricing, right? Mm -hmm. right? So now it has gone down a bit. It's really a bias. It's, it's gone up right and then now. come down, and yeah. then it's kind of stabilized. But not, it, not yeah. proportionally. It's mm -hmm. still still on, but still on the up. But yeah. you still have that room to make some money in mm -hmm. the next few years if you buy a house out there. And the type of home you get out there, I'm talking about fully uh, upgraded. So you got all your granite. You have Every, uh, you know like uh, fancy cabinets. Nine foot ceilings. Wow. Um, Three thousand square feet, like, and you get different types of homes. There's mm -hmm. a lot of homes out there with lofts. Where you get a whole third level, right? Like it's a different. I think the builders did a really great job well, out there. Which, which builders are, are, are primarily out there? Um, the new builds, I guess. Uh, which... Brookfield, mm -hmm. uh, Weston. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a few more, but those are the two big ones. Right, right and now. you guys, uh, your your office in particular, you guys have uh, some relationships with those guys. So That's you guys, correct. so you yeah. can actually bring clients Absolutely. from the GTA out there to look at properties. Yes. And you know, th and that's a really a really nice thing because, in my opinion, when you go direct to a builder, and this is just my opinion. Yes. When you go direct to a builder, you don't get the full level of service, and they don't know what yeah. else is out there. But, so right. when you have a realtor that can help you focus on those things. Yes. You know. Well, it, in it all helps. fairness, they have to push their product, of course, right? Yeah. You come to a, a realtor. So say you come to office, we sit down, we figure out what it is you want. Mm -hmm. We know exactly which builder is good for is you. It's going to be a good What's fit for you, yeah. Right. So um, we could just uh, clear that away, then you jumping from uh, model home to model home. Right, right. Yeah. right. Okay, well, that's, that, that's awesome. And again, we have, this is Janelle, Janelle Muhammad from Remax. Che, che. <laughs> che Realty <laughs> up in Bradford. Yeah. So with on that note, what I want to do is just take a quick break and um, ask you guys to stay tuned. We're just going to uh, be back in a few moments and we're going to talk about investing outside of the GTA. Are you retiring smart? Make your home's equity work for you. With your home's equity in our 30 years of experience, the Retire Smart Properties team can help you achieve the quality of life you've always wanted. Our services are 360 degrees. We'll give you advice, take care of staging and selling, and help you find the perfect home and community to transition to. It's time to enjoy the retirement lifestyle you deserve. Visit our website today to learn how you can use your home to retire comfortably. The Retire Smart Properties team, powered by Remax West. Hi guys and welcome back to Let's Talk Real Estate and I'm your host Anne McCanhai. Normally Jay Ridgefall is here with me but we have uh, a lovely guest expert uh, from out in Bradford, Janelle Muhammad. So uh, Janelle, I really want to thank you for joining us today for the thank show. Um, realistically we're talking about you know the benefits of living outside the GTA or even investing outside the GTA. I know we still have a few questions we wanted to touch on about physically moving outside of the GTA yes. and commuting, but let's just keep on uh, on schedule yeah. and jump into segment two. Sure. So I've done a lot of investing outside of the GTA for my clients, sure. but I usually, I typically recommend if you have that, whatever the price point it is, 500,000 or 450,000, and you can't find something in the GTA, 
you can look outside the GTA or yes. you can just look at a condo or something else inside the GTA at you a could, lower yeah. price point. What's your take on that? Do you think that there is you know, a, a good market for investing outside the GTA, specifically in Brantford or, or even anywhere in the, yes. uh, in the areas around there? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I think m most investments within uh, the Toronto area, the greater Toronto area, mm -hmm. would be a good investment. Mm -hmm. uh, they hold their value, obviously. Yes, yeah. and it's a very attractive city to foreign buyers, and mm -hmm. we are viewed uh, favorably in the world. Um, however, if you are looking for a sh more short-term investment, say five years, mm -hmm you want to take advantage of the accelerator, right? right? And you want to make your money and move on to your next investment. Mm -hmm. If you're looking long-term, then both. Uh, you, you buy in Toronto, you buy a condo mm -hmm. in Toronto, which will always be a good investment. Right. And you rent it out, mm -hmm. and you keep it long-term, and you know, you, you, your money is secure. That brings me to my next question now. Now, do you find a good base of tenants out in cities like that? Because I know specifically um, the difference from, let's say, Shelburne to Orangeville. Yes. You have almost no tenants available in Shelburne, but you yeah. have a ton available in Orangeville, and it's only 15 minutes away. Yes. What's your experience on that? Um, you definitely get a different type of uh, uh, renter. Mm -hmm. You get more families, young families, mm -hmm. which is good because then you have two incomes mm -hmm. um, as opposed to a young urban professional. So right. Income. They're both good, but uh, in, my, in my opinion, I, I agree with you because then yeah. that that's uh, it's stability that holds the uh, holds right. hold the home Two together. Two incomes versus one. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. And um, when someone starts, uh, when their kids start a school, they don't necessarily want to move exactly. anytime soon, right? Mm -hmm. And Toronto's kind of becoming like New York. We're going to have a lot of renters mm -hmm. in the next few years, uh, just because of the house prices. Um, that those properties are going to be golden, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a limited budget and you really, you really do want to invest you want to get in before the boom because we have a lot of people asking right. those questions yeah go outside of the gta mm -hmm. because it's all going to be it's all be going to become one the gta is always expanding mm -hmm. right it, it really is you know even a few years back when you know when they amalgamated the the gta yeah even before that, no one really thought of it as a separate entity yeah, anyways. Yeah, it's true. So it's uh, true. as you see it expanding and expanding, like even when you're going, let's just say west, for example. Yes. You know, uh, you're Mississauga, then Oakville, then Burlington, and basically yeah. Burlington is touching Hamilton now. It really So is, yeah. it, it really, it, there's, there's kind of no, there's no, there's no reason to like want to stick in one particular That's the area. thing. And, um, you know, it, it depends on what's important to you, too. Some people want to be close and have everything at their fingertips. Mm -hmm. That's that's totally fine if, if that's what you want. If you want to make money, places like Hamilton, Oshawa, mm -hmm. all those places, like you, you know what? a wealth of money it's to be It's funny you mention there. even yeah. Oshawa, especially yeah. for investing, because I've, a, I've had a client, one in particular I'm working with right now, mm -hmm. um, he purchased a, a four-bedroom, 2,100-square-foot home for 400000 uh, about two years ago. Yeah. We're selling it right now for six twenty five. dollars yeah, and, and, yeah. and there's still room for growth, because that's when you think about that, a four-bedroom home out there, it's, yeah. that's still a sizable property. It is, And yeah. I, I think one thing that a lot of people need to really focus on is the yeah. fact that this is going to turn into it's not fully there but it's going to turn into a commuter uh type of Absolutely. uh type of Absolutely. hub yeah. and you know as soon as we get up up to that standard with the new yorks and the london and paris yes. of the world yeah. then it's going to change a lot and yeah. and i think bradford specifically is an area where it's 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 gonna it's gonna really just double or, or triple. That's right, and yeah. you could tell a lot uh, about a city by the way the government invests mm -hmm. in the uh, the commute, mm -hmm. the the transit, right? They just uh, extended the the subway up to Vaughan, mm -hmm. and that's gonna continue. Uh, um, once they start um, all the artilleries like it starts mm -hmm. you know like a like a spider yeah right? exactly and everyone just then you know okay, then you really then you really never outside, have to live anywhere yeah, yeah. You, you can live wherever you want really yes. and, and you know and there's one thing that i specifically wanted to touch on yeah. while you're talking about this we're in the age of technology That's right. nobody expects you to be at your job you know five days a week 24 yeah. 7 yes. they'd rather they'd rather have access to you on your laptop and that's on right. your phone yeah. for a longer period of time yeah. and you don't have to check in at the office physically that's right yeah. and i wish more employees would like they're embracing it i wish it would be slowly uh, like you know mm. even a faster uh, approach to that because it's better for the environment mm -hmm. it's it's better for people's family lives yeah and it's proven that it, they're, they're more productive 
working from home. Well, because you know you're you're a little bit more comfortable, right? Yes. <laughs> so yeah. you're you're imagine this, you know, you wake up in the morning, you do your same routine, you send your kids off to school, yeah. but you have that extra 10 minutes of sleep. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that made a big difference, yes. right? And yeah. then you I, I find that you you jump on your computer and you just want to you plug away. Yeah, you, yeah. exactly, you plug away yeah. instead of wasting 35 or 45 minutes in the car. That's so right. I guess it it's, uh, speaks to your quality of life. Exactly. And as more and more employers start yeah. embracing this aspect of you know the work life balance, yes. I think we're going to see a lot more people moving out to places like this. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. That might have a lot to do with that actually. Yeah. So I guess I can ask you a, a personal question. So sure. does your does your husband does he work uh, outside or in the office all the time, or is it half no, and half? No, he or? goes in once to two days a week just to touch base, but he works from home hmm. uh, most of the time, and uh, he's working all the time. But he's so productive because he's not, it's like, you know, you're saving two hours of commute per right, day. That goes right. into his work. Yeah. And then he's fully uh, present after that because mm -hmm. he's done everything. He's not so you can actually just check time. out and you're not and you're not leaving the office at 5 and getting home at 7. <laughs> yeah. And actually he ends up working late sometimes too because uh, he, uh, you know, he's at home and he has everything set up to right. go. If he has to leave at 5 to catch a go train or miss you have the, to leave. the traffic, yeah, you got to leave at yeah, that time. So there's so work. many benefits to it. I, you know, I really feel employers are going to start jumping on the bandwagon. They already have, but yes. I, I feel like it's going to really change over the next 10 years. And that's right. where we're going to see these hubs like Bradford and, you know, uh, uh, Shelburne and even anywhere in those areas. That's even right. Burlington. I'm seeing a lot of people that are actually commuting from Burlington to Toronto yes, these days. So, commute, but I mean, hey, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you just one other thing with regards to towns outside of the city, mm -hmm. the main area. The, the sense of community and the friendliness and everyone knows each other, yeah. kids on the street, they all go to the same school. Mm. It's really something uh, priceless. Right, right. And you know what, that's funny you say that because I grew up in uh, Edmonton and that oh, was, you, you know, in the, in the 86, 87, 88, okay. like early, early 90s. Now, it was a completely culture shock when I came here yeah. because everyone, it, it wasn't it wasn't small or tiny, but it was very much more of a hometown feel where right. everyone is, um, you know, going to hold the door for you <laughs> yeah. or something as simple as that. Yes. And when you come to the GTA, everyone is so busy and focused. You yeah. can't even like have a conversation with someone if you yeah. even yeah. if it was something that's completely normal. Yeah, they might look at you and yeah. <laughs> they're they're on their way to something. That's yeah, the thing. or they're or they're fa home. they're glued to their phone, right? Yes, that's right. They're on their way to their cars to to catch right. the, the <laughs> to, traffic to commute home, right? to commute. <laughs> oh man, so yeah. that's that's a it's a really nice uh, a really nice thing that you mentioned there. So yeah. so realistically now. Um, for investing outside of the area, so I guess you think it's really good for a nice short-term uh, type of type of flip. Yes. Tenants are, I guess, a little bit more few and far in between, depending yes. on the property. That's right. Um, because realistically, you know, the, until the jobs start catching up with the city, That's then right. you're not going to have people that are actually drawn uh, specifically to the city. Right. And I've noticed that myself. Yeah. Because I've um, had a few clients that have uh, actually moved moved out. Oh, it looks like we end up uh, have a caller. Oh, great. Uh, it, we'll put a pin in that for a sec. Yeah. Sure. Hi there, you're on live with uh, Let's Talk Real Estate. Hi, um, I just had a question in terms of being a first time buyer. Okay, yeah. Okay, um, I was just wondering, I'm currently debating between staying in Mississauga, which is my current location, and moving a bit further out. I do work from home, uh, so that's not really a concern for me. I was just wondering in terms of first time buying, what would be preferable at this point? I'm thinking about renting here or or moving out. Or buying city. further out. Hmm, okay, good question. Thanks thanks for that. Um, Janelle, what's your what's your take on that? So the question is should you rent in the city yeah. or move out and own? Yeah. Absolutely, a hundred percent. Move out and own. Move out and own, right. Yeah. Why pay someone else's mortgage here? Why pay someone else's mortgage here than go mm. out and make your own money? And, and, no, and you're paying the same amount, well, right? Well, that's, that's really a, a great point because, you know, in general, us uh, advising our clients on both sides of the spectrum, yeah. we would love you to come in and rent one of our properties for our clients because yes. you sound like a great person. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, we but, want you to make the money. <laughs> but, yeah, so so, rea so realistically, uh, I, you know, it, t it comes down to it where it's yeah. better to own something. That's right. And then it's take, to deal own. with your commute, especially if you're working uh, working from home. Yeah. Like I get a lot of uh, lease uh, to, and I always tell the, the people like, okay, fine, 
rent for a bit, mm -hmm. then go out and get your own property at some point. Use this time to save and make well, up a down payment. Well, well then uh, again, at a certain point, it becomes where rent is so high in the GTA, and yes. especially if you're trying to rent inside the GTA, That's you're going to end up spending $2,000 a month, at and least, where are you yeah. really saving? Yeah. You don't have time to save or money to save. That's right. So, uh, you know, if you can stay at home, mm -hmm. I guess, as long as it, as long as it is, yeah. and make your savings there, and then you yeah. can kind of move out of the city. Yeah. So um, right. uh, I really want to thank you for that question. Uh, hopefully we, uh, we answered it for you. Thank you so much. You did clarify. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thanks, Ben. All right. Um, so, realistically, I guess, you know, that was more segment one, but still, yes. you can, you know, move Why out, not? move yeah. out. Yeah. Okay, exactly. great. Um, with that on, um, with that on, we're running out of time for this segment, so I'll ask you guys just to stay tuned for a few more moments, and uh, we'll jump back into a few question and answers just after the break. Hi everyone and welcome back to Let's Talk Real Estate here with your host Amit Kanhai and we have a special guest here, Janelle Mohammed uh, from Bradford. Uh, now she's a realtor out there and working with Remax Chai Realty and uh, she's here to answer some of the questions about negotiating you know, outside of the city versus negotiating in the city. Yes. Uh, so Janelle, uh, I'm with a few questions and answers um, I want to answer in this particular segment. Yes. Now, what is it like negotiating with a property uh, outside of the city versus inside? And and to be more specific, you know, what are the sellers like? Um, is it a different market? Is it a different feel to it? Is irrevocable times, you know, as uh, stringent? What's it like dealing with that uh, outside of the city? Well, I mean, sellers in the city sell sellers everywhere. Mm -hmm. they, they want the best value for mm -hmm. their home, and they want they're gonna push uh, for that, right? Mm -hmm. But it's definitely a more relaxed negotiation. Right. Um, you don't have uh, you don't have that shark feeling. Mm -hmm. with, uh, you that know, high real, pressure. Yeah, you know, like extreme. you know, buy now and never sort of thing. Um, you have the option, um, and there's also a lot of inventory. Mm -hmm. So that right there puts uh, the precedent on you know how much you could push someone. So then, <laughs> so then the buyers tend yeah. to have a little bit, well, a lot more uh, purchasing power there because you you do. have you you can look at maybe 10 properties and yes. then you know they can choose this one or that one and then I guess one thing that I always thought and this is correct me if I'm wrong uh, working out in Cambridge a little bit um, yeah. I noticed that we a few years back we had a deal where there was two people interested in the property at the same time yeah. and it sat on market for 45 days with no interest and then okay. all of a sudden we had two people interested yeah. so uh, my same client time. yeah right same that's time. just the way it works yes, right? why not? so my client was one of them mm -hmm. and another client from uh, from within the city there okay now uh, we went through we both presented both offers were very much similar from what I, I heard afterwards okay and the uh, seller's realtor told me specifically that they wanted our family versus the other family and it didn't matter about price oh. and their price was slightly higher it was probably three or four thousand dollars more right. but they wanted a young 
family yes. to move into the home and take care of it. So I, I think I thought it was so strange because yeah. you know from working in the GTA in general, yeah, yeah. it's just always dollars and cents. Definitely, yeah. there's and, and more emotional attachment. There's more emotional though. attachment yeah. to the property, and you know if you've lived in a property for ten or fifteen years yeah. and you've raised your family in it, yes, you want to turn over that's the, the keys. Thing. And that's the like that's so typical outside of the the GTA. Yeah. people get emotionally attached to their communities, mm. and they're thinking of their neighbors and they're thinking of uh, you know they love this home. This home mm -hmm. has been good to them. I want to make sure you're good yeah. because I don't want you to be rude to my name. <laughs> my I neighbor. know exactly, and you hear that stuff all the time. Find me a good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> make sure you sell it to someone good. You hear yeah. that all the time, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, definitely. That's that happens out here. So. <laughs> wow. Okay. So that's Keep good. Nice. So there's a lot, a much more of a community, uh, community vibe, I definitely. guess. Yeah. Yeah, that, that definitely. makes it that makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, another question I actually had for you now. Uh, what's the average? Um, I'm I'm not gonna quote you. Yeah. Average uh, days on market. What does that really look like out there? Because in the GTA, even now, yeah, we're in a little bit of a softer market. Yes. We're still seeing properties that are going within 30 to 40 days, maybe yes. even under 60. Yeah. What's the typical uh, stay out there with uh, you know so much in extra inventory? Um, I would say 30 days to about. 45 days really so yeah, it's very it's, it's very much comparable it's similar it is similar because the price is all lower still right, right? right um I two houses went up for sale on my street it sold within 23 days wow. because the prices were amazing beautiful homes for mm. uh, you know uh you know what it, it's it comes down to more of the value that you're yes. getting out there so it's peace that's of mind thing. good value yes. you know a uh, nice sense of community that's right and, and schools are all good out there infrastructure Real, is like good the like schools said. are um uh my kid's school uh it's only a few years old mm -hmm. new, oh but, that's beautiful Beautiful and the school itself is beautiful. I'm mm. like, this is a school. <laughs> I moved out from Mississauga, and which is schools are amazing in Mississauga, but they're older schools. Yeah, they're built in the 60s, 70s, really 80s. Really older yeah. schools, mm. right? And uh, we went out there. We're like, is this a theater or is it, <laughs> is it a school? It's beautiful. Don't even mention like uh, air, uh, facilities like in Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen some schools like in the core city area yes. that you know they're amazingly ranked schools, but they look like they're falling apart. Yes, yeah. that's right. And even like going to the Costco out there, you don't get run over. By <laughs> like, there is there's a line but there's a you know it's it's civil wow <laughs> yeah, okay yeah. so it's a so it's, you know you're working hard in the city and then you you know you go, it's a retreat, go relax for yeah. sure it's so every retreat. day you get to retreat every day that's the thing I'm, i feel so lucky um mind you i still go into the city a lot because i lot. love the city vibe we love to hang well out also yeah you're also and you yeah. you know as a realtor you can't say i'm only working in one area you're obviously working in the city as well that's and in, right in the GTA. yeah can you can you share a little bit about your specific experience uh, on on you know being in the city for so long and yes. then and then and then leaving what, what, um, what did you did you miss it were you were definitely. you depressed for a, while, a month I was, or? Uh, like uh, when we first moved out I was like oh my god why did we do this it was mm. just like the first few months just getting used to it right mm. you go out and the like where's the action where's all the traffic and yeah. stuff and then you don't realize you get used to it and you come into the city like oh my god how do people live like this <laughs> it's right? so noisy yeah it's, it's so, so noisy um so there is definitely a uh, I would say a learning curve with yeah. it, mm -hmm. but um, you get used to it and you realize you're a lot more at peace. Mm -hmm. um, just even being able to walk out to a trail or go to have a picnic by the lake. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. Like it's just like what kind of life do we live oh, here? Oh my goodness! And the homes are so beautiful. So you you know right? you're spending a lot of time in inside the property and you have a lot of space. And then yes. when you want outside time, you have peace and quiet outside. That's right. I have a yeah. client of mine that we moved them out to uh, Niagara, just outside of Niagara, last about a year and a half ago. Okay. And the son, um, one of the kids, the three kids, one of them suffered with uh, se severe asthma. Um, yeah. He was, they were managing it with uh, puffers and yes. different medications. Um, after about three or four months, the um, my client contacted me and said, you know, something really strange has happened. Um, the asthma has gone down by, you know, like 45 or 50 percent wow. just because they're outside of the, the GTA. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I always thought that this asthma stuff was all, you know, pollen or, or whatever it is. That's but I right, guess yeah. some of it is also uh, pollution. pollution. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. That's a that's a big so thing the, right So there. you're saying the quality of air is better out there. We'll breathe better <laughs> out in Bradford. And it's interesting. You see the stars more at night. Really? Like, I... I swear, like you can't make this stuff up. Like you walk outside <laughs> and like you drop the garbage bag the first couple of times. Like what's wow. happening? And it's like it's so the stars it's are so serene, bright. It's beautiful, yeah. really. Yeah. I guess that's because of the noise pollution and, and whatnot, right? Yeah, and the lights um, mm. from the city uh, dim the uh, yeah, yeah, the, the noise. Yeah, all. the light pollution. Sorry, yeah, that's yeah. right. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. Like, and I, I guess really you know us it. here. Um, you know, we see, we we think when we're in a condo building, you see all the lights. It's beautiful. Yeah. But we're looking at the lights on the ground. You can't see anything. Uh, 
<laughs> that's the thing. Anything up top. Yes. It's like when, you remember when there was that big power outage? Yes, yeah. And people, like, uh, they started notice, noticing things, like, uh, you could see... Uh, the Milky Way at, yeah. at some points and people are calling in like what is this in the sky <laughs> that's, sad. that's sad we didn't know it was right there all yeah, along yeah yeah you know? yeah well I guess you know it's 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 something that you know we just we don't focus on because we yeah. never we never seen it so it's a yeah. different life out there really. it is yeah I mean if you if you enjoy the hustle and bustle I know a lot of people do mm -hmm. I, I was one of those people like I love the, the action of the city and mm -hmm. going downtown I still do all those things it's a little more driving mm -hmm. but I have this beautiful home and I have, and you have peace have this, you have peace amazing when you get neighbors home. and the school and all the you know all the teachers and mm. it's amazing small town vibe and yeah. good investment great investment that's I'll, really what it comes down to well, um, I mean if you are looking to if you're at a point in your life where you really want to take advantage just you know everyone made so much money mm -hmm. in the GT recently mm -hmm. in the last few years it, exactly they're and still, now it's kind of plateaued it's kind of plateaued but yeah. there's still the small towns out there that you mm -hmm. get a little more room with yeah, a lot of that overflow right yes that's yeah. right we in Bradford we get a lot of Woodbridge, Woodbridge Vaughn Richmond Hill runoff Really, a lot of my neighbors are from those areas. Really, and they're so, so I guess happy. is it is it the is it the the older generation or the younger generation younger. that's moving up there? Um, younger, definitely. Um, I think the median age is approximately uh, don't quote me on this thirty three mm -hmm. to thirty four. Wow. So lots of young kids too. So basically, what you're saying is, you know, this is uh, the equivalent of when we've seen people leave um, Mississauga and go to, to Milton. That's right. That's right. exactly mm. the best. Uh, my husband and I say this all the time. Mm -hmm. Bradford is Milton ten years ago. Wow. Yeah. I, and you know what? The, the deals were phenomenal <laughs> 10 yes. years ago in, yes, in, in right. Milton. Yes, that's right. And look at the homes in Milton. They're so mm. new. Mm. And they, they have this newness about How it. How are right? the lot sizes? That's one question I have for you. Are they, um, are they decent? Are they really tiny? Are the builders being cheap about that? For like a four bedroom, you're looking at about um, 36 to 40 mm -hmm. for an average size lot. That's good. Um, and then you have the bigger homes, which mm -hmm. you'll get into the But realistically, that, that's much more than, uh, than I would have anticipated because, yeah. you know, in the GTA right yeah. now, like there's townhouses that are built. 19 feet wide <laughs> That's so right. yeah. so it, it's it's kind of it's, it's also scary deep too like yeah the they're very you the see. properties 110 feet deep a lot of them wow are like and you know they stopped cutting right land um, by 110 in probably in the late 70s here in the GTA so it's something that if yeah. you want a 110 lot you have to be either a 4,000 square foot house yes. <laughs> or it needs to be a bungalow that was built in 1960 that's right yeah. so so yeah. you have more more uh, land for the kids to play to that's garden right. plant and all that sort that's of stuff right. yeah yeah wow okay Okay, so that's some really good information. Um, yeah. on, on that note, what I want to do is just take a quick break and ask our viewers just to stay tuned, and we'll be back with uh, Let's Talk Real Estate in just a few uh, moments. No one wants to live outside the box. We play it safe. But if you had told me all those years ago that I'd go on to win Juno Awards and Much Music Awards, I would have laughed. To be distinct, you must be different. So I'm going to tell you this. Love, Inc.'s Your Superstar went on to explode onto the Canadian dance scene. It not only was a hit in Canada, it was a hit internationally. Top five in the UK, across Europe and into Australia. Our music was everywhere. Radio, TV, video, fashion, television. I was on tour across Canada, branching into the US and Europe. Our music was everywhere. Our video was everywhere.
Hi everyone and welcome back to uh, Let's Talk Real Estate. Hi uh, here on the last segment we want to focus on a little bit of a market update inside the city, outside the city and we have Janelle Mohammed here from uh, Remax uh, in Bradford, Chai Realty. All right, so um, we'll get, jump into the market update after. There's a, a couple quick questions I wanted to ask uh, relating to negotiations in um, outside the city. I know you focus a lot of that. Uh, now, are there still things like home inspections? And, 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 and the real thing in the GTA, even now, Yes. in a very balanced market yeah. sometimes you have more than one buyer it's a it's not a huge issue for a few reasons mm. um, a lot of the homes are newer right so uh, whether you want to do a home inspection or not mm -hmm. it's up to you however as realtors I think we should always advise our clients to do the home inspection it's great um, to encourage yeah. your clients on yeah, that. yeah and even if they think it's going to hinder the negotiation uh, like we were talking about this earlier book a showing mm -hmm. for an hour and bring an inspector in. And, and I just, love that idea. That is it's the perfect. best thing yeah. to do. Um, however, uh, if you want to be more thorough, put, put it in. Like I always say, be safe than sorry, even with newer homes, mm. um, because you also can take advantage of the Terrian warranty, and right. you, but you have to figure out the problem before that runs out too, mm. right? So home Seven inspection, years and whatnot. big you know, check. It, it's, it's funny that you mentioned the, um, you know, it, it's up to the buyer because mm -hmm. it, it really is but on a newer home sometimes you might think to yourself well i don't okay. need it yeah but we had an inspector on here on the show a few weeks back actually no it yes. was in uh it was in february yeah. and he specifically did an inspection on a new home because the buyer just wanted it mm -hmm. and no one thought about it at all not the builder not not the uh, agent and everyone just said fine go for it do whatever you want he did the inspection he went around with his thermal imaging uh camera mm -hmm. and he realized that they forgot to put insulation in the roof in the attic. Are so you the, joking? No, I'm not joking. Oh my God. So the attic had absolutely no installation. And all it was was a minor oversight yeah. uh, from, you know, whichever guy was on the job that day. Maybe he was sick and someone yeah, yeah. wasn't there to show and up. And you just called the builder back. But... But you could have gone three, six a year, <laughs> you know, uh, without having any insulation and wondering why, why is it so cold and why is my house, uh, why is my heating bill this yeah, much? And I you would never would have known because yeah. how often do you go up into the attic? That's the thing, right? So mm. um, I, as if, uh, if I'm representing a buyer in particular, I always recommend do the home inspection. Mm. Like it just, so many instances we saw, like it's a good thing you did the home yeah. inspection, right? Well, you know, on, on that note now, um, when, because I know you do with a lot of new builds as well. Yeah. Now, they, I've heard a lot of horror stories about these um, uh, final walkthroughs and if they don't allow you to do a final walkthrough yeah uh, so the can you explain what that is the final walkthrough when you get your keys how does that work for a brand new home yeah so that's the PDI the pre delivery mm -hmm. inspection yeah you have to do it mm -hmm. like um, if you're not able to make it you're out of the country send a family member send someone who knows what they're doing bring an uncle you have to do uh, you have to be there for that right right because um, for, uh, for example uh, for our pre-delivery inspection, mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they'll go through, they make sure everything's okay, but I saw so many little things, and they fixed it to perfection by the time we moved in. Really? Yeah. So you can go in there with a fine-tooth comb and say, Absolutely. well, I, you know, I don't like that, there's a little nick there, yeah. and, and my list was like 30 things no at the end of way. it. Yeah, and it was small aesthetic things, mm -hmm. but um, uh, I want to move in, I'm paying money for a home, I want, to, I want it to be in good order, right? And that's a complete difference uh, than when you're buying an existing home. Now, both complete. obviously, <laughs> both have their merits, yes. but when, uh, you know, when, when you're picking on those things on, a, on an existing uh, resale home, yeah. nine times out of ten, you're not going to get the item fixed. <laughs> yeah, but you could also use it in your negotiation, you, Yeah, right? and, that, and that's so, the thing. So yeah. a lot of people, what they'll do is say, okay, you know, thousand bucks here, five hundred bucks here. That's right. But to be honest, and yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, I've been doing this for a while, Whenever I get five hundred bucks off, or a thousand, or fifteen hundred dollars off for whatever that item is, I go. I, I always ask a year later or six months later. So did you ever end up fixing that? Yeah. No. no. <laughs> Never. <laughs> because when you think about it, yeah. that reduction in price yeah. is not money that's back into the buyer's pocket. No. It's it's just less money that the seller is actually going to get in their pocket. Yes. So that's when you, right. Well, yeah. So when you think so about might it, might as well, well fix it. Well, yeah, exactly. Might yeah. as well get it get it sorted out ahead yes. of time. And Unless I guess, it's something big and you can't afford to do it, then fine. Mm -hmm. But you otherwise, if it's like a small paint job or something, just do mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Minor do it something minor. Yeah. So yeah. I guess there's some a lot of really nice benefits or moving out to, uh, to to builders and, and you know newer homes out there yeah, yeah so it's good that you guys that your remax location has some good relationships with those yes, guys yes absolutely there. however I, I will will tell you this mm -hmm. um in the spies market you're better off going resale really and that absolutely. that's your opinion so tell me wh wh why do you think that 
Because I think uh, builders can't uh, adjust their prices from the 2016. Oh, uh, yeah, 2016, 2017. They can't bring yeah. it back down. So you, it's way overpriced right now. And as you see in uh, Toronto, mm -hmm. some condo projects are being scrapped. Oh, yeah. Right? Vaughn, Vaughn was the most and recent really one. And yeah. really putting people into financial ruin. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, in my opinion, by resale. There's a lot of inventory out there. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to end up paying less for it. Uh, you can move in within three months. You don't have to wait two years or a mm -hmm. year. And you don't have to uh, deal with, I know you dealt with this, but can you tell me y you wouldn't have killed to make sure you have no dirt on your on your car for the first year oh my god oh my god it was it's, like, just, it's terrible it's because you don't have grass you know there's yes. dirt and, and dust flying everywhere yeah your your furnace filters are clogged everything just gets dirty Every yeah it's um you, when you're going into a new house you have to be prepared mm -hmm. prepared for those things you're not going to have uh window treatments right away for example you're not going to do every room like mm -hmm. my house has a ton of windows um we started off with paper blinds and then we started doing shutters and you know because there's so many expenses like you've got to do the fence mm -hmm. you have to do you know you want new furniture all education of that lot levies and grading fees and, That's right. <laughs> and all it, these it things. adds up it adds mm -hmm. up so uh, but i my position on new versus resale at this point in time definitely resell and you see it's, it's great that you mentioned that because you know we're providing both uh, both sides to the same coin and for yeah. you specifically you've actually done both yeah so you know it's great to, to really let our viewers know that it's not a, a plain yes or no answer it's yes. specifically at that time you need to evaluate your circumstances That's right, yeah and the market and yeah. then make an informed decision absolutely yeah. you have to change with the times two years ago when I bought brand new definitely that was a good time mm -hmm. to buy brand yeah. new I got to customize my house the way I wanted to for the same price and you made some good coin <laughs> and I did right um, now mm -hmm. definitely resell mm -hmm. and I think it's gonna be like that for the next couple of years right and, and you know a lot of our viewers don't really understand how where we started this uh, this conversation so I'll just uh, remind them yeah. now it's builders are stuck on pricing from 2016 and 2017 That's right. because they built this uh, this up this inventory at this and they started selling in phase one and phase yes. two yes. and now they may have phase three remaining yes so you if the market market has already adjusted itself you you can't be asking last year's prices when last year's prices were higher yes so I guess that, that well, stuff is just sitting lower. on the market yeah you exactly. can't you can't do that so I then know. if they if they ever try to lower their pricing you know a lot of times what I've seen in a few neighbor uh, areas is they've actually been getting sued if they That's lower right. the price and they say well I bought in phase one why are you selling this now at this price for and 20 grand the less the buyer should be mad because mm -hmm. why is it they they bought early in the earlier phases and paying more than in the later phase mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense right so the buyer is in a bit of a predicament right now yeah right? well I guess the buyer and the builder too you know we, yeah. we always like to make out the bu the builder as a bad guy yeah but sometimes they're not. <laughs> yeah, they're not. Yeah. yeah in general like because I've seen a lot of uh, cases now that are now surfacing and coming to light yeah about people that have purchased you know two years ago and That's now the right. prices uh, the, the banks are saying they're reevaluating saying sorry we can't give you the full uh, amount that we promised you on your mortgage yes that's right. I mean, we don't want to make anyone else, anyone out to be the bad guy. But, mm -hmm. uh, but as realtors, we protect protect the fiduciary responsibility. Mm -hmm. We have a big fiduciary responsibility. Yep. We and at this point in time, it's tricky. You want to, you know, you, you feel sad for the, the builders because yeah. they're in this uh, position, mm -hmm. but it's really better off buying the resale homes at this right point, right well yeah. that's that's a good point now on, yeah. on that note i really want to just jump into a quick uh market update as we wrap sure. up this segment so in in my opinion janelle i've noticed that over the last uh maybe six months or so i've been seeing um everyone's saying the market stabilized and you know it's slowed down quite a bit i know the volume is definitely down yeah but we're still seeing properties move very quickly. yeah it's moving mm -hmm. um it's uh not quite 2016 pricing <laughs> of course yeah. but it's um sorry 2017, 2017 yeah. pricing but it's back to 2016 mm -hmm. so have we really lost that much no, no. Not, not at all yeah. really and especially yeah. one thing I, I usually tell a lot of our buyers when you're buying high and you're and you're selling high it's all relative if you're buying low and selling low buying it's low. all yeah. relative yeah, it's a relative exactly so people uh, some like I was talking to some neighbors recently I'm not so they say yeah, I'm not selling now the prices is too low I said but yeah but if you sell right now you also buy you also buy low yeah sell low buy low buy sell high buy high exactly yeah. so a lot of people don't realize that so yeah. it's you're just kind of moving with that 
that asset, whatever the amount is, you're just moving it to the next property exactly. and it's all proportionate. Same amount of so equity, right? Well, specifically in the GT, I'm noticing um, any properties under 600,000 yeah. moving very quickly. And very we're quickly. still actually having multiple offers on townhouses and condos. That's right, yeah, yeah. I noticed that too. And, and really, and I think that's just where the affordability is right now with that's all right. the mortgage uh, rule changes and, and whatnot. Yeah. Anything in the six to 700 is still selling, but it's taking you know maybe that 30 days and you're not getting multiple offers. Yes. And anything in a million plus is, is kind of a little it's bit stagnant, sure. yeah, because yeah. it's a specific luxury uh, type of purchase. Right. Now, can you tell me a little bit about it outside the GTA and even specifically in Bradford? Um, Bradford uh, in particular has um, a few uh, a few areas where it's very Some reasonable price properties. Yeah. Um, oh, I was going to say they, they're really expensive homes mm -hmm. and they take a long time to sell, mm -hmm. but the homes are mind blowing. Oh, like those, it, are, the, those like, are the estates, right? Yeah, the yeah. estates, mansions, that's mm -hmm. what it's But it, you definitely, you're looking at 90 days on the market minimum, wow. right? Um, mm -hmm. Very, very rarely you'll see it go uh, quickly. Mm -hmm. And these that are like 5,000 square foot like, yeah. mansions, okay, yeah. right? Oh, but, yeah, like, I mean, I'm <laughs> talking like serious stuff, right? Well, okay. Um, but the mid, mid to higher range of uh, homes, say from, I would say eight to a million, mm -hmm. you're still looking at a 30, 40 day, uh, days on market, but it is selling. Right. And it, they're not they're not getting killed with the prices either, right? There's right? no crazy price yeah. reduction or anything like there that. There is, there mm -hmm. has been a, a bit of a reduction, but it's, you know, people Nothing are still pretty happy because mm -hmm. the people who bought homes in Bradford a couple of years ago, they're doing well. Right, they're doing right. Really so they're not well. really, they're not really worried too much. They're not too worried. They've yeah. already gone up 200,000. They're like, minimum, okay, sure. Yeah, minimum, we'll, we'll. yeah. And then the, the, the cheaper homes or townhomes, semis, small detached homes are moving really quickly. Wow. Really quickly. The 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 buy, first time buyers are really taking that, advantage. Now, that, of now that. that's a, that's a specific um, area I want you to uh, elaborate on a little yes. bit because you know you right now off the bat you'll compare a semi uh, in say Mississauga that may be 650 uh, or in Brampton that may be 600. Yeah. Now that same semi might be 450 uh, out there or five. No, are you looking at about at least five? Okay, so still five. five. So we're still yeah. relatively yeah. you know a hundred thousand dollars cheaper. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's a really big number when you uh, think about your pre-approvals. Big days. number and bigger property. Really? Newer yeah. property. So you're getting nice, large, uh, larger semis, you know? Yeah, nice. Uh, and the, even the townhomes, they look, a lot of, some of them are smaller. Mm -hmm. um, a great, uh, great uh, buy. First great time buy, buyer, yeah. First time buyer. Mm -hmm. And then some of them look like an executive type town, wow, right? So, yeah. Uh, so, because, you know, a lot of those end unit ones, and I, I, I did some digging, for, full disclosure, before, yeah. uh, before the episode, I went online, I checked out what was in Bradford. Yeah. So I also saw some of those end unit townhomes, yes. they look like houses. They're like, I've seen one that was They're 20. 2,400 square feet. Yeah, it's and unit townhomes. It's so nuts. like it's you know, beautiful. Wow. So and the, the you can tell the new, attention. the whole new one, and they really do things uh, differently. Like the, the kitchens are laid out differently, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's really. Well, nice. you know, it's a different uh, type of feel for the open concept. That's kind of where everyone's uh, moving towards. Yes. Gone are the days where you wanted a separate living and yes. dining, and it's then, just a you know, big open area. Yeah. 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 So I guess it's a little bit hard for design when you want to put a couch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, it is. But, but other than that, you know, it's a, it's a better feeling and it, more flow in the house. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Uh, like I said, the uh, places like Bradford, uh, Orangeville, they, they do attract a young family, mm -hmm. and younger families have younger taste. Yeah. And so the open concept works for them. Wow, right? that's yeah. great. Yeah. So that's a really cool market update on uh, on that that specific area. Yeah. And it, it's really what I want our, our viewers to really understand is how different it is from from the GTA, different but the same. Yeah. You're able to kind of move your family out yes. there uh, and and have all the exact same amenities. That's right. Um, you know, there's no real there's no real reason not to. Well, yeah, it, it comes down to the person, right? I've had a couple clients yeah. now on that note that have yeah. said, hey, well, you know, I've uh, I, I've moved out there and it's been a year already. They loved it for the first year, year and a half. And after that, they're just, they're like, oh my the, God, I need to come back. <laughs> yeah, but they're still laughing because of the money they made. Well, <laughs> right? real, yeah, realistically, <laughs> yeah. I, I've had clients that have made, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars over yeah. the last three years moving That's outside right. of the city and then coming back in. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And um, Bradford is also looking, they're waiting on, they're still in uh, the approval process of linking the 400 and the 404 up there, the Bradford Bypass. Wow. So, uh, I've heard about fingers that. I, crossed it was, that I, I didn't think out. that was a real thing, the yeah. Bradford Bypass. Yeah, okay. it's, um, fingers crossed it works out, and I really hope they push for it because mm. it'll ease the uh, the traffic coming down the 400 right, as well, right? Right, because a lot, a lot of that, you have a lot of buried traffic as well, that everything That's right. kind of just yeah. uh, jumbles up in that, yeah. in that area. Because right now it takes, uh, it takes us about 15 minutes to get to the 404. Right. Which is not bad. No. Right? 
it'll take five minutes <laughs> once, you, once you have right, the highway, right? right so right, right. Uh, if you could get downtown pretty quickly, you could get to the east end really quickly. So Bradford is in a good position right between the 400 and the 404. Wow, Bradford. okay. So it's kind of that, that step that's not really berry, it's, um, but it, but it's like right that's in, in right. the middle. And, you know, it's not as far as you as you really think when no, you're saying, you know, a 50-minute drive. Or, yeah, or it's about 20, 15 to 20 minutes north of Wonderland. Right. Just right. to give people, a, a, a you know, an idea. The marker, yeah. 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 Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, everyone so, knows Wonderland. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, cool. So that's great. Now, we got a, you know, a nice market update on uh, outside the area yes. and also within the GTA. Yeah. So on that note, what I want to do is just uh, let some of our viewers know to uh, remember that May the 6th, we have our um, TCN uh, Toronto Caribbean Business Social. So make sure you, uh, you know, come on by and uh, take a look at uh, all the great things that we have to offer there. And I really just want to close up this particular um, episode. And I really want to thank you for coming out, Janelle. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. <laughs> all right. Good stuff. All right. If any other questions or comments, you can just scroll down and um, click my name or click Janelle. Send us an email, a quick text. We're always available to answer your questions. So, again, thank you for watching Let's Talk Real Estate. Uh, take care. What if CEO actually stood for catching every opportunity? This week alone, I've seen three businesses that shut their doors in this community. Investing in yourself, like you have to know what your brand is first. So there's no other way that you're going to build a brand unless you network. You have to eventually get out there. And it stems down to a lot of times not having the right knowledge, the right know-how.